Right, greetings and welcome back, gentles and ladies and men, to episode 6, I think, of Let's Play Donkey Kong Country in the Game Boy Advance. Uh, had to take a little break there between recording sessions, because, you know, life happens. Uh, we are back with more of Creme Croc Industries. And this world is, you know, obviously the last level we played, Oil Drum Alley, was a factory level, but we got some, a couple of cave levels snuck in here as well. And this one, Track Attack, is kind of the first of two levels with the big conveyor belt sort of dealios. This thing is not a con- well, I mean, it has a conveyor belt on it, but the conveyor belt itself doesn't move, and thank goodness. Uh, maybe there was a version of this game that originally had the conveyor belt move, or like, maybe that was an idea for a level that got scrapped, but... I don't know. At this point, I'm just blithering. Um... Yeah, so this level has a couple of... This this has one of the better hidden bonus levels in the game. Uh, in fact, when I was doing my practice playthrough, I just missed it completely, so... Hopefully I won't screw it up here. Got our O up there. So, yeah, you have a whole bunch of mini Nikes and whatnot. Uh, yeah, it's it's been kind of interesting to come back to Donkey Kong Country 1 and, um... You know, kind of a kind of, cause I find that uh, sometimes with some games, like um, even though I may not love it the first time I play it, I can come back to it later, and then I'll find that uh, you know my thoughts are completely different. And Donkey Kong Country One is definitely one of those cases for me, because like when I originally played this game, oh, I must have been seven or eight. This is, you know, it was back in 2003 and I was born in 94, so do the math. And, yeah, I just, I got it from my Game Boy Advance and I remember seeing, um, these commercials that had, like, a photorealistic gorilla swimming through the ocean. Maybe I can find the ad and put it up here. Only in Donkey Kong Country. Swimming gorillas, blasting barrels, runaway minecarts. Only for Game Boy Advance. Traded everyone. And uh, that that was how I was introduced to Donkey Kong Country, and I saw that ad and I'm like, wow, that looks cool, I want to play that. And then, um, I think I had... I was saving up for a Game Boy Advance SP by doing, like, chores. And I ended up spending some of that money I saved up to get this. And this is the same cart, I still have it from all those years later. Yeah, but, I don't know, back then I, I played it and I thought it was fine, you know? But it wasn't until later that I actually finished the game. Like, I think I got to the second level in Chimp Caverns and then that was all she wrote. And it, was, it wasn't until many years later, after I'd beaten the third game on GBA, that I came back and finished the first one. And I didn't even play the second game until much, much later. So, if, if you think I like DKC2 because I'm nostalgic, then... Um, you are sadly mistaken, my friend. So that was the very last one I played. And I did not grow up with it. I, I, I didn't play it until 2008, I think. And, you know, I guess, it, guess it's been long enough for me to have some kind of nostalgia for it, but even so. Uh, I, you know, obviously, like, I can't, I can't stress this enough, but this roll move will save your skin more times than you can count. Especially with all these enemies dropping on top of you. You can you can roll into an enemy that drops on top of you and you will kill it. I'm not sure if that's how they intended for you to play this. Like, my guess is that they... The idea is that you're supposed to dodge them, but... I, you know, the rolling works so much. There are a couple enemies that you can't roll into, like this Claptrap here. You, have, you do have to dodge him. And I believe there's a Crusher coming up eventually. So we'll have to... We'll have to dodge those, but... Yeah, but for, for most of the level, you can just roll into the enemies, and that'll get you by just fine. There you have a Mankey Kong. I think after after that first barrel, he can't really reach you anymore, so... Yeah, there we have that crush I was foreshadowing. He'll drop on the end of the platform. The timing for this might be a little bit different in the SNES version, like maybe he's harder to dodge. I'd, like I said... Uh, I, it's, it's been, it's been a few years since I last played that version of the game. It's been since the Game Mavericks run, probably. Uh, let's see if we can't get a blue. Uh, 
Uh, I don't know how I screwed that up. Oy vey. <laughs> and we're... it's in that... that takes care of our first level in this world. That is, uh, Track Attack, or Trick Track Trick. Why do I keep thinking it's Track Attack? It's... It's not what that level is called, but... You know, at any rate. Uh, let's see... Yeah, looks like I'm on... I'm on track for everything. I was just double checking something, but here we have Poison Pond. Uh, which is definitely my least favorite level in the original, but here, you know, I do have to say, this green, this green, I don't know if it will translate to the final video because of, you know, color space conversion and everything, but it is very overpowering in the original RGB. But when you play, when you, but, you know, obviously, uh, the DS screen on the card I'm playing on is in YUV, and then I think the raw footage I'm getting is in RGB which are two different color spaces, and one thing I find with with uh, RGB as opposed to YUV is that greens tend to be a lot brighter, and that's definitely what's going on here, because, like, holy shit, that is bright. Um, and then I look down at my DS screen, and it looks fine, so it's, you know, color con space conversion, the, uh, the, 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 the MP4 encoding should fix that up. Uh, the, those squidges there, I cited that as an example in the review of the camera not being too helpful uh, in the SNES version, but, you know, obviously, uh, if you have this, if you can hold on to this unguard and carry it through the level, then that's not going to be a huge problem. You got your, uh, there's a, a thingy up there, a camera, the scrapbook photo up there, so make sure you go up into that little passage if you're, if you're crazy enough to be following along to this playthrough on this hole-in-the-wall channel that's only just getting started. Let's see. Here we have our Kong letters. Yeah, like, Rambi... Rambi makes this level a joke, I think. Uh, so... or, I'm sorry, on guard. I don't know how I screwed that up. Uh, there's Secret Passage, even. Aw, oh, crap. See, at this point, the animal bonuses are just getting in the way, because I think I actually already have all of the pictures of the of the animals. We should actually check on our scrapbook at some point here. And now that I'm stuck here, I don't think I can leave. Yeah, so I, I have no choice but to play it, and at this point, I've already got 99 lives, and I can't get any more. So, it's, you know, at this point, the little animal bonus statues just get in the way. Like, they're more helpful in the original because uh, when you turn off the game and come back to it, your lives do not save. So you'd have to pick up more lives all over again. So this is useful in that situation. But even then, I usually play the original version in one sitting anyway. So I'd have just about as many lives as I do now. But, yeah, there we go. We got a whole bunch on there. Yeah, sorry about that, folks. I had to go uh, check in on something real quick. Lots of interruptions going on. Yeah, right, ab right about when I'm recording this, uh, I don't know, Sonic Mania came out, and that's been kind of on my mind in a lot of ways. So that's, uh, yeah, kind of a big Twitter diatribe I went on. I'm facing some consequences for that, but enough about that. Uh, we're still playing Poison Pond, and like I was- oh crap, I forgot, I need to go over up over this way. And now I've lost my on guard and my- and one of my hit boxes, or one of my hit points. Uh, these- these mincers, that's what they're called, there's gonna be an entire level on Chimp Caverns dedicated to those things, so... I believe the N is up there? I already have the N, so the G must be over this way. Uh, if you don't- if you do not have Rambi, or on guard, how do I keep mis mixing that? Mexing? Uh, um, so if you do not have on guard, make sure to move slowly through this area so you have time. I believe the camera in the original version did not show that far over to the right, so... That's- that's another little difference. I'm- I'm spotting all this stuff. This is how I do Roar, folks. I play the game and I see little things like that and I mention them. And yet, I still manage to get things wrong and have people yell at me, you know? 
Yo, Diddy, lost the big guy again? Hop on in and have a look. Alright, so we're gonna play more of this. Out with the trash. Bummer, the water is all full of trash. Collect as much as possible within the time limit. The more trash collected, the better my reward. Haul in at least 10 pieces of trash and remember, don't hook any fish. Best cleanup is zero pieces of trash. Alright, so that's pretty self-explanatory. We got... See, I, I already forgot how many I need, so that's, that's, I guess we'll just go for as many as, as possible. Uh, so apparently, uh, evidently once we catch these fish, we cannot put them back in the water. You know, we can't just throw them back. Oh, crap. And we have a couple of them. And grab this guy up here. There we go. Uh, it might have been... 10 pieces of trash? I'll get that little jingle when I get there. Yeah, that was all- that, that's all you need. These- these fishing minigames are really easy. Uh, this, the- the last one has a bit of a different twist to it, so that might be a little bit, uh, more difficult. Uh, but, you know, at, for now, we're- we're all set. Try to go for the high score, I guess, to see if we can't get more... those better balloons. Well, hopefully that'll help out the the wildlife here in Donkey Kong Island just a little bit. You know, those Kremlings got busy. They they built an entire factory in the time we've been playing this game. Well done, dude! Here, take this reward. Moving on up in the world. Once again, referencing the Jeffersons. Okay, so, elevator antics. Um, I kind of hate this level, actually. Uh, it's, I don't know, it's not that bad, and I already missed a bonus room, so I guess I get to commit suicide. Gotta commit Sudoku. So, we're gonna hand it back on in, and right up at the top, over here, is a little cave. Our first bonus room of the stage. So, you head on in. I had to make sure that the microphone was recording. Ugh. Well, good thing this is my first Let's Play, and not you know, super far down the line. I can afford to make these mistakes. I mean, it's not even really my first Let's Play. I've made, like, a ton of them on Game Mavericks, and I even have had a couple on the review channel, too, so it's not like I'm new to this. Uh, but, you know, still. Gotta be careful about what I'm doing, or, you know, gotta be a bit more careful. I've had some... I've had some big boneheaded blunders. Uh, I try saying that five times fast. In the past, Red, these, those slippers have terrible hitboxes, I gotta say. Because I'm pretty sure I was on top of that. But I digress. So up here we have our second bonus room. And this one, I think, is, is more... Yeah, there might be a, a Kong letter in here, so we gotta be careful about that. And sure enough... Well... Now we get to backtrack. And now we get to redo the entire stage! Which is just fabulous, isn't it? Uh, I don't think there was a K or anything up there, so... Yeah, the K is over here, not in the bonus room. I'll take care of that Neki Jr. It's interesting how the little Nekis are the, you know, are the ones that are more dangerous. Is they can they can shoot projectiles at you and the big ones just flap around. Let's see, head on over this way, and that time I got the the little slipper, little fucker. All right, let's jump on up over here. We'll head back into that bonus room again and give her get another shot at that Kong letter. All right, and. Recommend shooting up to the right so that you can get that green balloon. Not that it matters at this point, because if you're if you're anywhere far enough as oh, looks like we got a chance to get ourselves snake ourselves another photo right there. And you gotta be careful because somewhere down here is the last clung letter. Take care of these clumps. Not to be confused with the the nutty professor two the clumps. Which I believe I made a joke about in an inverse cast episode once. But now I'm making another joke about it. 
Yeah, not even the Nutty Professor specifically, specifically the sequel, Nutty Professor 2 The Clumps. Um, I'm not even sure how I managed to get on this topic. I guess it's because those those general Kremlings over there are, are called Clumps. Let's see. And I believe our final bonus room is not down there. It's in another shaft similar to that one at the end of the stage. So I just wasted all of our time. And it should be down there. Head on over. Um... This is amateur hour. That's it. Someone took the controller away from me and made that blunder just now. So, I don't know, it's like, what else is... I think I've pretty much covered most of the, the big topics with this, this remake here in terms of, like, uh, many of the changes and what do you think about the game overall? That was a lucky save there. I mean, I don't, I don't know. I guess uh, one thing I should mention is that there's actually a special hidden difficulty in this version of the game. I, I don't even know if I talked about this in the Roar episode, uh, but basically, if you can, I think that if you once you get 101 percent, you unlock Hero Mode as a possible option. You might have noticed that when we started a new save file that there was an option to play. Hero mode, and uh, if you've ever used like the cheat codes in um, the SNES Donkey Kong Country games, you might know that there is like the the tough code or the toughest code, and the toughest. What those basically did is unlocked an optional difficulty, a couple, two other optional difficulties actually, uh, one in which you have no checkpoint barrels, and another in which you have no checkpoint barrels or DK barrels. So you basically have to play the whole stage in one life without a second hit point. And that's basically what hero mode is. It's the same it's the same sort of idea. You play as just Diddy with a yellow shirt. And I guess the idea is that, you know, he's supposed to be Diddy Kong as a hero in training and that's a plot point that that will eventually carry over to Donkey Kong Country 2. I dare say that that's like the entire subtext of the game is about uh, Diddy Kong uh, claiming it becoming a hero in his own right by saving his mentor and you know restoring peace to his To his homeland um, so One thing you might have noticed and I think I was briefly talking about this in the last one of the previous episodes is that uh, You'll notice that in, in the levels where there would be like a visibility sort of dealio in the SNES version where it would get dark enough that you couldn't really see what you're doing uh, that is generally changed to be so that I mean obviously the Game Boy Advance was not backlit I mentioned that in a previous episode so that means that in levels where they would normally make the screen black except for what you were supposed except for like the thing that was supposed to be making it easier for you to see right uh, they just make it it's a lot brighter and much easier to see in the original like you almost don't even need like for example that um, Torchlight Trouble is the name of the level I'm thinking of, but Squawks the Parrot. Uh, the idea in the original was that you could barely kind of see what you were doing, and so that's that's what makes Squawks useful in that stage. Uh, but in this version, because of how this, this the original screen was lit and how the colors were displayed, uh, they couldn't go that route because it would make it too hard to see. So what you get, so that means that when you are Recording that footage and putting it on a backlit screen like, you know, most PC or phone screens uh, What you see is it looks visibly bright enough that you don't even really need squawks in this version And that's that is something about these remakes that I do think That I have seen people criticize before. I mean, you know, obviously uh, When you're playing on the original GBA, that's helpful, but I don't think anybody's ever gonna want to play Game Boy Advance games on an original model GBA anymore, especially since you have the DS. Oh boy, I forgot that I need this thing. Well, I lucked out there because thanks to the the bouncing behavior of the steel keg, uh, it bounced off the wall and hit this last bonus room I was searching for, and I managed to get that G. Uh, even though I couldn't see it, uh, but blackout basement's a little bit different from something like Torchlight Trouble in the in that uh, most of the sprites and the backgrounds will actually go pure pitch black. So it makes me, and I can still see just fine because you know, I mean, I guess they felt like uh, because maybe because Squawks's range is smaller, they felt like 
they had to make the screen brighter so that you wouldn't be just totally lost. I'm not sure, but point is, uh, there's there's a clear disconnect there. Anyways, we have yet another dancing sequence. This is going to be very tricky. Keep an eye on the speed of the instructions. This is where... This is the second to last one, so obviously it's going to be a little bit harder. Again, we have the shoulder buttons. Those are fair game. I do have to say, uh, compared to the funky mini games, which are all pretty easy all the way through, uh, there is a nice difficulty progression to these dance these dance sequences, and I do, Game Boy Player aside, I do f remember having some issues with those. Or, uh, you know, having to try at least a couple times and whatnot. So, yeah, there you go. That's all done and over with. Cool, you sure know how to hit the moves. Here you go, take this. And more lies we do not need, but on a on a more positive note, we did get ourselves a nice photograph. Uh, but on that note, I think it's time to stop for the episode. It's time to stop, because it's been about 20 minutes and, you know, don't want to keep you guys here forever. So we are going to cut things off for the episode. Join me in episode 7 and we'll continue our truck through Creme Croc Industries and more than likely start the next world as well. So until then, I'm Exo and I'll see you guys next time.